Just as much as a Mary Quant mini skirt or a George Best goal, the mini epitomised the swing in 60s. And by the 70s, that was proving something of a problem, because in the decade of the wedge, the curvy old mini looked decidedly old hat. Our story starts in 1975 with this prototype that British Leyland built to replace the Mini. But of course, they kept the Mini and decided to create something a bit bigger. And this is it, the Metro, launched in 1980. Yes, here it is at last, the Mini Metro. Probably the most important all-British motor car to be launched for a generation. And Top Gear decided to play down the minus points, like the ancient A-Series engine, and play up the plus points, like, well, the long service intervals. The other way you can save money with the Metro, too, is on your maintenance costs, because the uh, length of service between each uh, service is 12,000 miles or one year means so it only goes in the garage once a year and your bills are that much lower. That's going to mean a lot to the budget conscious family motorist. The other thing you notice... The future of much of what was left of Britain's car industry lay with the Metro and it even won a design award from that renowned car and design expert Prince Philip. The choice of the Metro design team to receive the designer's prize for 1981. In a triumph of optimism over common sense, they even tried to export the Metro to the home of the small car. This Italian job spoof was filmed at the launch of the car in Italy. It wasn't so much that the Metro was a bad design, but it was badly made, and those A-series engines were pensionable. The Metro did get better. It changed its name too to the Rover 100. There were new engines and a modern new look, but it was all far too little, far, far too late. These days, drivers expect things like power steering as standard, and while it's not strictly necessary on the 100, it would save a bit of work when parking. It's not even optional on the Rover, which is a bit disappointing when VW's excellent Polo has that, plus ABS brakes and an airbag all in. And it can carry more shopping. The 100 is a clever attempt to upgrade the Metro, but Rover desperately need an all-new small car. Just when, BMW aren't saying. But in my view, it can't come soon enough. The Rover 100 was probably a smash hit in Grange over Sands and Eastbourne, but it didn't really set the world on fire. And by 97, it was all over for the Metro. Last year, while you were wrapping your Christmas presents, a British motoring institution passed quietly away unnoticed. After 17 years, the production lines of the Austin Metro, lately known as the Rover 100, have shuddered to a halt. The abominable Austin is no more. And far from shedding a misty-eyed tear, I say, goodbye, baby, and amen. So that's the new Mini Metro. It's spacious, it's lively in performance, and it's very economical to run. Yes, it does have a few rough corners, but I do think that at prices that start just over £3,000 and go up to around £4,000, it's very competitive. I really believe and hope it's going to breathe new life into BMW.